Welcome to Africa Business Report with me, Komla Dumont. Each month, we bring you the biggest stories and the hottest individuals making waves across this great continent of Africa. This month, I'm in Habaroni, Botswana, the diamond capital of the continent. Botswana is widely acknowledged to be one of Africa's most successful economies. However, the recent global economic downturn seems to have stolen a bit of the shine off the country's bling. We'll find out how the authorities here are coping. The diamond, it's one of the most potent symbols of wealth and power around the world. And if you are fortunate enough to have one around your neck or perhaps on your ring finger, then it's quite possible that it came from this country of 1.8 million people known as Botswana. It is the biggest producer of gem diamonds in the world. Right now, I'm inside one of the most important factories in the country where rough diamonds are cut polished and prepared for export. But Botswana wants to move beyond merely exporting diamonds and now to maximize profit from every stage of the industry. I'm here with Dr. Akulang Tombale, who is with the Botswana Diamond Hub. Tell us, what's the idea behind having a diamond hub? The idea behind having the diamond hub is to help Botswana from moving from just being a rough diamond producer to becoming a diamond center. Now we can see that in this stage of the operations, the rough diamonds are being prepared for export. But what other allied industries can you find in the diamond hub? Uh, jewelry, jewelry manufacture, diamond trading for both polished and rough diamonds, and also support industries like financing, technology, and uh, security. The whole diamond chain is about the, uh, 90 billion US dollars. We are only getting about 3% of that. We hope that uh, with these activities we can go up to 10%. Botswana is recognized as one of the most successful economies in Africa. What can other African countries that are resource rich learn from your country's experience, specifically this diamond hub as well? The Africans, I think sometimes we are being um, emotional. We nationalized because we believe that we own the resources but uh, what we need to believe is that we have to get people to help us to develop this industry although the control still have to be with us thank you very much dr tombali now as you've heard the government of botswana wants to benefit from every single sector of the economy and they're looking beyond diamonds and now they're looking to boost other parts of commerce as egon kosu reports Welcome to the pride and joy of Boyce Sabaneko and his father, Sitebo. Their searingly hot, dusty farm lies 250 kilometers from the pristine coolness of the Diamond Hub in Khabarone, and it keeps them pretty busy. I think, but then uh, dehorning must be done uh, this week, uh, yes. It's around six and a half thousand hectares in size, boasting a thousand head of cattle. And it's something of a rarity. It's been run as a commercial enterprise for more than 10 years. Many farms in Botswana are operated on a part-time, non-professional basis. All of this used to be communal land, and that means that anybody who used to raise cattle on a casual basis would be able to come here to graze their cattle on the local bush. Now, as you can see here, this is very dry land. It's very hot. We're at the edge of the Kalahari Desert, and that means that only people with the technology and access to money to dig boreholes really can work this land. The family invested heavily to irrigate the land and make the farm a profitable enterprise. They're looking to expand with the help of a government loan. Uh, we've had this farm for more than 15 years. But getting the finances right is only part of the story for Boyce or anyone wanting to be big in beef. Land is a problem, yes. Uh, it actually takes time to acquire land because uh, we have to go through the land board uh, and they have to come and see whether that land that you want to uh, use uh, for agricultural purposes is suitable for what you want to do, whether be it uh, for crop production or animal production. A lot of land here is used by informal, non-commercial farmers. That's because raising cattle is an important part of the culture. It's a traditional way of expressing wealth but that makes land even more difficult to acquire for professional farmers. Lunchtime for younger animals at a facility owned by another company a short drive away. Now once the cows reach the age of about 12 to 18 months, they're brought here to a feed station, which is a pretty large affair, and it's a key stage in the process of making sure these cows go successfully to market. They are subjected to a process known as backgrounding. That means they're fattened up before they are sent to slaughter. 
It's all in the timing here. You've got to get the right cows on the right feed at the right time or profits will suffer. The feeding station offers the expertise many small farms may lack, so the authorities want to see more feed points to help make beef production more professional. Once they're slaughtered, the cows end up here, at the Botswana Meat Commission, which looks after the country's beef exports. From here, the meat will end up on dinner tables all over the world. The European Union is a prime customer. The man in charge reckons this facility is only running at around 60% capacity. He simply isn't getting hold of the right cows. If we are to improve on the number of cattle that are sent in for slaughter, we have to convert from oxen production to what we call winner production. At winner production, it means we are able to take cattle off the field for slaughter at a younger age. A winner is still in its prime stage. When it's in prime stage, it enables me when I sell the, the, the product in the international market to compete on the same level with other industrialized countries and therefore be able to realize better returns because I'll be selling a younger tender meat from a younger animal than when I'm selling an ox. Back on the farm, Boyce continues to plan for expansion. He wants to pass an even bigger business on to his son. But success will be more than just a family affair. The entire industry hopes the spread of the professional farmer will make it a major foreign revenue earner. Egon Kasu, Africa Business Report, Juaneng in Botswana. I'm in Habaroni's financial district. This country has ambitions to become a regional financial powerhouse. Already, its stock market is one of the best performers in Africa. But what does this mean for the ordinary man or woman in the streets? I've been finding out. Do you know anything about the Botswana Stock Exchange? Just a little bit. What do you know? Uh, some of the guys who've got money, enough money to purchase stock in the in the industries out there, they do invest and then after some while they get to have some money coming back to them. Do you own any shares? Uh, currently, I don't, but I would like to. You would like to? Yeah. Why don't you own shares? Uh, I don't have the capital to, to do it. If, if, if you had money, would you buy shares on the stock exchange? Of course I would buy, although I know there are risks involved in them. To take part, you have to have at least cash um, to buy stocks. So that can be a be part of the stock exchange because you don't have money to buy the, the shares then there's no how you can perform Botswana may be small in size but it's huge on ambition I've been to meet the man who's charged with the responsibility of turning this country into Africa's financial capital Alan Boschwein What's the idea of establishing an international financial services center here in Botswana? Well, we believe that uh, the vision of an international financial services center is very consistent with Botswana's history over the last 40 years. Uh, we have a, a, a very credible track record, uh, macroeconomic management, political stability, um, and uh, a, a strong record of growth, but also of good business ethics. Um, a very open economy, no exchange controls, and you know, and we are convinced that we can create a financial intermediation of business services platform for our region. Botswana has one of the highest literacy rates in, in Africa, but what about the requirements of human talent? This requires specialized financial knowledge. Do you have that? Botswana has invested uh, a lot in, uh, in, in education, not only in Botswana itself through tertiary and uh, secondary level. There's a realization that because we are small, we need to supplement that by uh, bringing in uh, specialized skills, hopefully from the African uh, diaspora. We, we have a very good record of working with uh, African lawyers, bankers, etc. Or, or, you know, a, a diverse range of professionals coming, working here, and being quite happy to work here. So that, that's what I would say is, 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 is what we have to do. Well, I've been on the streets of Habaroni and talked to quite a few young people who really just don't know what's going on. How much local buy-in do you have to establish this, this center? Is it important? 
Well, it's not a it's not a, a sector that's traditionally associated with Botswana. The traditional association is with uh, agriculture, beef, and then we moved on to diamonds and mining. But I think in this third phase, uh, a lot of uh, those younger people uh, are saying, well, mining doesn't absorb um, that many people uh, in terms of where should I look to, to be career-wise or entrepreneurially. Uh, and then uh, this, this, this area does present uh, legitimate possibilities. So I think our outreach to them has been more effective with those uh, young aspirant Botswana who have got that international uh, acclimatization or regional acclimatization. And I think uh, they will increasingly know that they need to take Botswana to the next level, move into non-traditional sectors. And that's it from this edition of Africa Business Report coming to you from Habaroni, Botswana. Now you can find out more about any of the stories we ran on this program by visiting our website, bbc.com slash Africa Business Report. Biggest producer of gem diamonds in the world. Right now, I'm inside one of the most important factories in the country where rough diamonds are cut, polished, and prepared for export. But Botswana wants to move beyond merely exporting diamonds and now to maximize profit from every stage of the industry. I'm here with Dr. Akulang Tombale, who is with the Botswana Diamond Hub. Tell us, what's the idea behind having a diamond hub? The idea behind having the diamond hub is to help Botswana from moving from just being a rough diamond producer to becoming a diamond center. Now we can see that in this stage of the operations, the rough diamonds are being prepared for export. But what other allied industries can you find in the diamond hub? Welcome to Africa Business Report with me, Komla Dumont. Each month, we bring you the biggest stories and the hottest individuals making waves across this great continent of Africa. This month, I'm in Habaroni, Botswana, the diamond capital of the continent. Botswana is widely acknowledged to be one of Africa's most successful economies. However, the recent global economic downturn seems to have stolen a bit of the shine off the country's bling. We'll find out how the authorities here are coping. The diamond, it's one of the most potent symbols of wealth and power around the world. And if you are fortunate enough to have one around your neck or perhaps on your ring finger, then it's quite possible that it came from this country of 1.8 million people known as Botswana. It is the... Uh, jewelry, jewelry manufacturer, diamond trading for both polished and rough diamonds, and also support industries like financing, technology, and uh, security. The whole diamond chain is about uh, 90 billion US dollars. We are only getting about 3% of that. 